Well, hello, church. Um, happy Sunday. We are so happy to be with you once again. I hope you're having a great morning. Um, I just wanted to prepare your hearts. I hope you guys are excited to be in the presence of God today. So um, get up on your feet. And let's just be excited for worship today. And just, we're praying for breakthrough today in your situation, whatever you're going through. Uh, we hope that um, God touches your situation and just touches you and your, your family today through our worship and through the word. So um, stand up and just open your hearts to the worship today. And uh, let's join in worship. Like never before 
Your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never Name be 
magnified, not just today, not just tomorrow, but forever. Lord, everything that we do, from our personal lives to our public lives, Lord, let your name always be glorified and magnified, Lord. Would you just touch our hearts and open our hearts to what you have prepared for us today? And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It is great to be with you all virtually in the house of the Lord this afternoon. This afternoon, I want to start off with a few questions. Have there been moments in our lives when we had a dream? And let me be a little bit more specific. Have there been moments when we had ambitions that we wanted to strive for? Maybe we wanted to become a teacher, a doctor, a preacher an engineer, or even, if I may say, a veterinarian. The list goes on and on. In the movie Tangled, there's a scene where Rapunzel and Flynn were at a pub when they encountered a few so-to-be evil people. As hesitant as they were, each of them, each of the evil people had a dream. They had something they, they wanted to strive for. And there was a song that was sung, which I will not play for your sakes this afternoon, that in that song, that they expressed the dreams that they had. I say this to express this point, that all of us have dreams, goals, and ambitions that we want to strive for in life. Let me say that one more time. Each of us, have dreams, goals, and ambitions that we want to strive for in life. However, although each of us have those dreams, those goals, those ambitions that we want to pursue, although they can be good, it could come to the point when those dreams, goals, and ambitions can become toxic. There are moments when we know what we want to pursue in life. And when we know that something, we do our best to research about it, to research that career. We do our best to look for that top well-known school so that we can go to get that education. We even dream, physically dream about that future in the career that we want to pursue. We think and act those things on a daily basis, but, there are also moments when we feel that we're left hostage. We feel hostage from pursuing those dreams. For example, your friends or even your family may tell you that you cannot pursue this field because of tradition. It's like saying this, oh, in this culture, we have to pursue doctor, engineer, or these specific things. You can't pursue this. You will dishonor our family. Or maybe, just maybe, your friends and family tell you that you cannot pursue a certain field because you're not good enough, because of certain limitations that you may have, physical limitations. We hear these things and more, and our personal response is this, that we want to prove something to people so that we can prove that we can physically do what we want to do. There are moments when we pursue a career, not for the glory of God, but for the sake of mankind. Instead of pursuing our God-given talents, 
we use our talents in a way where we're people pleasers. For example, let's say you're leading worship, but you're not strumming, you're not singing for the glory of God, but you're doing so to get that someone's attention. Maybe you're pursuing a specific field, not to really glorify God, but just to get someone's attention. And it comes to the point where I ask this question of curiosity. Have there been moments when we felt that we had our whole life planned out? We had a script waiting for it to be presented to God, indicating our many life steps that we want to follow. And we think that he'll automatically accept it. Have there been moments when we felt that before? Because the sad reality is this. Many people think that every path and every career is a God-given path when most of the time it will just boost our ego. Maybe we have something like this, a roadmap, something written out, just waiting to be presented to God. We figure out that perfect career. We figure out that perfect school that we want to go to. Even I may say, we find that perfect spouse that we want to marry. And we have a roadmap written out, one, two, three, four, to the point where we say this, I'm gonna study, I'm gonna graduate from this world famous school. After I graduate, once I get that diploma, I'm gonna party until the rave, until the night is over. And it's pretty much like this, eat, sleep, rave, repeat, all over again. You find and marry that beautiful spouse along the way, and you go on that perfect honeymoon. You check these things off to the point where, oh great, time to get a job. And you go to that career. And it's to the point where you work, 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 day in, day out, to the point where I'm just bored, I'm tired of this, and you say these two words, I quit. And you keep partying until life is over, and you die happy. You may have this planned out. You have life planned out from A to Z. But let me challenge us with one question this afternoon. If we were to follow this plan, where's Christ in this? Where's God in the equation? What's the point of doing this if what we do is temporary? Let's say one day we have this planned out. We have this written out to the point where we give God this. And he says, this is messed up. You can't pursue this. Rip it out. Do whatever you can, but do not follow that plan. Pursue the plan that I have for you. Study my word. Immerse yourself in my word to the point where I have that perfect plan set out for you. We seek God's word to the point where he gives us this better plan, where we seek his word, we pray his word, we live out his word, we physically rest on his word, we are awakened by his word to the point where we share his word. We do these steps on a daily basis, day in and day out, with this intention. It's not about me, but it's all about him. I show these two illustrations to express this, where life happens, things in life happen. We think that we have things figured out, but it's to the point where things kind of go south. And it's to the point where we tend to be exposed to the sins that we've committed. We do stuff, do, we do things that are wrong to the point where people call us out. People expose us to the sins, to the wrongdoings that we've committed. As we are exposed of those things and more, we tend to go to our devices. We tend to find comfort in those devices. But it's to the point where 
we make those devices our idols. If we handle those two exposures the wrong way, it will lead us individually to follow our own dreams, but to the point where we have a self-centered, not a Christ-centered lifestyle. If I can ask everyone to turn their Bibles to Psalm 145, we're going to be looking at verses 17 to 21. Again, it is Psalm 145, verses 17 to 21. The word of God says this. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all that he does. The Lord is near to those who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him, and he hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches all of those who love him, but the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will praise the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. The Bible makes it clear, saying this, that God has great plans for those who do right and those who follow him. God has great plans for us as long as we love him and follow him. Now with that in mind, there comes a verse that I believe that many of us are familiar with. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 where the Bible says this. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. I want to read that verse one more time. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. We hear this verse, and we, make, we tend to make that our life verse, and we often think, awesome, this is awesome. The Bible says that God has a great plan for me. I can just do whatever I want, and nothing in this world is going to stop me. I can just do whatever my heart contents. What else can go wrong? We think that, but that's not really what the verse is about. When it comes to the meaning of this passage, the Israelites were going through immense, intense hardships at the time for a period of time, especially since they did not obey the word of the Lord. After they went through hardships and suffering, God will bless them as long as they continue to follow the plan that God has for them to enter into the promised land. And let me reiterate this afternoon that God has great plans for those who do right and follow him. But the question now comes, how? How can we follow God's great plan for our life? And the answer is so simple. As long as we align ourselves to the word of God, then that's when God's great plan for us comes into play. God has given us a shape, an acronym for us to follow. He's given each of us a spiritual gift, special talents so that we can pursue God and use the talents so that we can glorify God on earth. God's also given us a heart a passion in what we are doing and what we believe in. God has also given us an ability, having the physical and mental capacity to do what we do. God has given us perseverance, having the drive and the strength to push through hardships and challenges along the way. And finally, God has given each of us experience, Gain the knowledge and skill along the way when it comes to physical, mental, and spiritual growth. With all that said, the only way we can understand God's shape in our life is as long as we seek his presence on a daily basis. 
the only way we can experience and understand God's shape for us is as long as we pursue his presence. Have there been moments when we wondered what we wanted to do in life? We're trying to figure things out. We're on this new journey, yet we don't know what we want to do at certain moments. The Bible makes it clear in Psalm 145, 18, where the word of God said that the Lord is near to all who call on him. Those who call on him in truth. There will be moments when we feel that everything is figured out in our lives. It's like a roadmap that we planned out. But it's to the point where we realize not only that there's going to be bumps along the way, but it may not be God's true path for us. Because of certain setbacks, our attitudes begin to change from positive to negative. As the unexpected things happen in life, we tend to question God on what he wants us to do. Let's say you're driving home from work. Everything's going well to the point where someone just crashes into you and you get to the parking lot. You sit there. You're starting to get angry, frustrated on what's going on and trying to control your anger. Maybe something unexpected happens to your health and it comes to the point where your health deteriorates. Less energy to the point where you're frustrated with what's going on. One final example being where people just get on your nerves. People just tell you things left and right because of certain circumstances. And because of that, you question the path moving forward. So many things happen in life. And we have so many questions and concerns. But when those questions and concerns continue to haunt us, we need to bring them at the presence of God, at the feet of Jesus. We must continue to see God's presence day in and day out for answers. As we search answers in God's word, we must have that humble heart when we approach his word. But if we don't, if we just seek his word, just desperate just for our answers and our answers only, then we're just seeking God's word the wrong way. As we only rely on our own expectations, our own reactions, and our own desires. Psalm 145, 19 makes it clear saying that he fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cries and saves them. You may hear this verse this afternoon. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. But you may question, what does it mean to fear God? What does it mean to fear God? Now let me be clear, that is not being afraid of him and his presence. But it's an expression of respect and awe and a submission to his word. As Proverbs 1, 7 makes it clear that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise that wisdom and that instruction. Something gets in the way of fearing God. Each of us has something that gets in the way from fearing God's word. And that thing is our ego. We tend to think that we have everything figured out in our lives. And it's the best plan that God has for us. Instead of listening to the word of God, just shoving the Bible to the side, we just treat the Bible like a grain of salt and just go after what we want to pursue. Now, let me be clear one more time that the only way to know the best plan that God has for us is to come humbly before his presence. The only way that we can know God's plan for us, the best plan for us, is to come humbly before 
his presence. As we live life on a daily basis, the positive and negative things happen in life. When we read, when we reflect and apply God's word, at the same time, we continue to plead God for help. Because the thing is, we cannot do this alone. God is near as long as we call on his name. We must call and seek his presence on a daily basis. And as we continue to seek God's presence, we must take in and apply what he says to our lives. Joshua 1.8 makes it clear to keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you can do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. Likewise, as we apply God's word into our lives, the Bible says in Psalm 145.20, the Lord watches over all who love him, but the wicked he will destroy. Now the question comes, how do we know that God loves each and every one of us. How do we know his love? We acknowledge who he is. We live and apply his word on a daily basis. And we continue to seek him humbly day after day. God is always with us. All we need to do is come to his presence with open arms. People think that they have their life figured out. Life always happens like a roller coaster ride. We have good days. We have bad days. When good days come, we are positive. We are happy with what's going on. But when something bad happens, even on that positive day, when something bad happens, we tend to react negatively to the point where we hit rock bottom. But if you remain in the presence of God, God will provide that right and true path for us. And the reality is this, as long as we seek God's presence, nothing and no one in this world can take away that path that God's given to us. God will indeed make a way when there seems to be no way. And continuing on in Psalm 145, verse 21, my mouth will pray, speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. The reality is this God is the one who will make all things possible. As God makes a way in our lives, we must continue to give glory, honor, and praise to his name, all because of what he has done for us. If we trust Christ as our eternal destination, if we set our high eyes to heaven, we can be sure that he's the one to fully trust on, not anything else on earth. There may be moments when we question when we wonder what the meaning of life is. And no one in this world will ever fully answer that question. We may ask, what's the meaning of life? What does life want me to do? We ask those questions and more. And we ask the people around us. But it's to the point where it comes back to, to the answer. I don't have a full answer for you. I'm sorry. But... If we rely on God's word, we give that question and concern to God. What do you want me to do? What path have you called me to pursue? As long as we immerse ourselves in his word to the point where we meditate on it and apply it, he will give us that path. Now, when it comes to our dreams and our ambitions, it is best to remember that God can confirm our dreams. Just because we want something doesn't make it right. We may want to pursue that path that we want to pursue. It may seem right to us, but in God's eyes, 
it may not be right. We may get what we want only to find out that what we expected is the unexpected. Having dreams and ambitions in life is a good thing. But we realize, we must realize that it could only lead to distractions. If we focus more on what the world has to offer from the many things that they give to us, we'll only fade the Bible away. If we focus more on what the world has to offer, our relationship with God to us means nothing. No matter how much we want something, we always have to remind ourselves that we've done wrong before. And the only thing we can do if we've done wrong, if we're trying to figure what life has for us, is to immerse ourselves in God's word. God's word and the presence of God can change our lives. And it's to the point where it comes to us. We have to ask ourselves this question. Are we following God's plan and God's path for our life? Or are we just doing whatever we want? Just raving till the world ends and to the point where we just pursue our own desires. Going back to Psalm 145, when it comes to the practicalities that God wants for us to follow, three simple things before I unpack them is this. First is to come to God humbly in his presence, bringing to him all our questions and concerns. We must come to God humbly in his presence with our questions and concerns. Secondly, we must continue to seek and apply what God says to us on a daily basis. Sometimes we may read what we don't want to read, but that is God's word for us. And we must meditate, reflect, and slowly apply it on a daily basis. Third, with everything that is going on in life, from the positive to the negatives, we must bring glory, honor, and praise to God because he is the only one who will make all things possible. We must let Christ give us the dreams that he wants for us. Seeking Christ first and delighting in him will help us discern what God's will is for our lives. We not, may not have a magical experience. We may not have this beautiful plan, this beautiful roadmap like we've expected. There will be bumps along the way. But as long as we give Christ our dreams, then as long as we continue to seek his plan for us and live out his plan, then we're living that true dream that God has. Secondly, we must lay our dreams at the feet of Jesus. We may have a wonderful plan set out in life, but if that plan is not what God wants for us, then we have to go back to square one. We have to, again, I say, immerse ourselves in the presence of God because change does not happen overnight. Change happens through our lives. We must take that long view term of that growth because along the way, there's going to be many challenges along the way, setbacks that may hold us back from the dreams and ambitions that God has for us. But as long as we set our minds focused to what God has for us, fighting the fight, running that race that God has for us, then all things are possible. And lastly, with everything that's going on, the positive and negatives in life, even there I say COVID-19 happening, changing the world that we're living in today, we must enjoy the ride. Life will always be full of hardships along the way. Many people think 
that life will just be full of bliss, full of flowers, a red carpet in the middle of that stage. But it may come to the point where reality hits us to the face, to the point where we realize that we can't get really what we want. We have to be vulnerable with what's going on in our lives, to the people around us, to our families, and to our friends. We have to be vulnerable with what's going on. And we have to be true to ourselves. We cannot let our devices control us to the point where we make those things our idols. Life was never meant to be perfect. Never has. Never will be. Life will always be full of challenges along the way. And it's easy for us to be angry and to react in such a way where we want to give up in life. But at the end of the day, we must continue to hold firm on what the Bible says. As it is our true source, our true guide, and our true path in life. Whenever there are times when something goes wrong, we must continue to put ourselves back in the presence of God. I read this verse earlier, and I want to conclude again with this verse. In Joshua 1, verses 8 and 9. And I'll conclude with this, as the word of God says. To keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. Doing everything that is written in it then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. If there's one thing I want us to take this afternoon, it is that God has the best plan for us. But the question now comes, are we seeking after his plan? Or are we just going after what we want to desire? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you so much for your word. And I pray right now, wherever we're at in life, that every single moment we continue to pursue you. May we continue to humbly come before your presence in such a way that we read your word to the point where not only we meditate on it, but we apply it in our lives in such a way that you will tell us so clearly on the path that you have for each and every one of us. May we not pursue our personal plans and expectations, but may we continue to pursue the expectations that you have for us and that come solely from your word. We thank you so much for what you've said to us this afternoon. And I pray that we continue to follow the plan that you have for us. From this moment onward to the day we see you face to face. And I pray everything in your precious and your holy name. Amen. Well, church, it is great to be with you all this afternoon. Pray a blessing over you that God will give us the rest, wisdom, and strength throughout this week. God bless you all. Have a great week.